It's very strange when my Zoom people are not. Oh, here's Nene. Thank God. <laughs> um, hi. Thank goodness you're here. It's so lonely without my Zoomers. So, happy, happy Sunday. It was gorgeous out. Was it not? It was. It was. Um, so, we're working on a couple things. I actually have somebody who's going to put this, uh, these videos on YouTube. So, that will be exciting. Hey, Jeannie Beans. Hi. <laughs> um, so, first I want to talk about... Uh, wow, that sounded so Long Island. <laughs> talk about uh, last week when we were doing uh, the mother, you know, stuff. Um, <laughs> hey, Nuts. No, um, so remember Mother's Day, we did uh, channeling, channeling the Divine. So if you didn't watch that, don't forget to go back because it's really important. Um, I'd like to know if you guys did anything after that more for the Divine Feminine because it was so funny. You know, every Sunday when I'm trying to figure out what we're going to go over, um, it's a lot of channeling just to get the ideas, really. So the next day after I did that one, um, I think it was the day after or two days after, I happened to see that Deepak Chopra is actually focusing on channeling the Divine Feminine. So I felt very validated. <laughs> I was like, aha, see? There you go. <laughs> I'm not alone. Um, yeah, because everything's so out of balance. See, look at that. I felt like, yeah, look, I, I really know something. I know some things, some things. Um, so did you guys notice, did you ladies notice anything after that meditation? Did you notice anything this week? Can you hear me? You weren't there? That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Um, watch it. So I actually noticed that I felt... Um, I felt better about myself. I felt more pretty. I felt more confident. So there is something to these things, guys. You should do it. Miguel Cervantes, que pasa? Hi. Hi, Michael. Good. You're going to like tonight for many reasons, obviously. Um, but because I just had the idea that uh, since I've had the song in my head for a few days, that we're going to focus on utilizing song lyrics to help guide our meditations. Ready for this one? So my choice, I've been singing actually a different Joni Mitchell song, but my song for tonight is Both Sides Now. Um, if you're not familiar with the song, I cannot play it on this because otherwise my video will not be posted and I don't really feel like singing it. So <laughs> not tonight at least, um, but I'm going to repeat the words. Both Sides Now. <clears throat> it's hard to not sing it, actually. Rows and flows of angel hair and ice cream castles in the air and feather canyons everywhere. I've looked at clouds that way. But now they only block the sun. They rain and snow on everyone. So many things I would have done, but clouds got in my way. I've looked at clouds from both sides now, from up and down and still somehow. It's clouds illusions, I recall. I really don't know clouds at all. Moons and Junes and Ferris wheels, the dizzy dancing way you feel. As every fairy tale comes real, I've looked at love that way. But now it's just another show. You leave them laughing when you go. And if you care, don't let them know. Don't give yourself away. I've looked at love from both sides now, from give and take, and still somehow, it's love's illusions I recall. I really don't know love at all. Tears and fears and feeling proud to say I love you right out loud. Dreams and schemes and circus crowds. I've looked at life that way. But now old friends are acting strange. They shake their heads. They say, I've changed. Well, something, something's lost, but something's gained in living every day. I've looked at life from both sides now, from win and lose and still somehow. It's life's illusions I recall. I really don't know life at all. I've looked at life from both sides now, from up and down and still somehow. It's life's illusions I recall. I really don't know life at all. So, absolutely, absolutely named both sides now. I can give you the background to this, but it's not necessary. If you don't know the song, that's one you definitely have to listen to. Um, you guys familiar with that song? A little bit? You're muted. I don't know what you're doing over there. Yeah, I'm not sure. You're not it sure? It familiar. I have to listen, listen to mm -hmm. it and be like, oh yeah. Now I want to sing it, of course. <laughs> like, hmm. <laughs> Very, if you sang it, I would very, oh, mm. Just saying. <sighs> should I do it, Michael? <laughs> I, I'm obsessed with that song. I literally have the 
I knew you would be. Rolls and flows of angel hair. <laughs> Makes me like so weepy already. I can't sing it. <laughs> we'll get there another time. Um, you're gonna sing it? No. <laughs> okay, anyway. So with a song like this, Joni Mitchell was a storyteller. So it's not like some, I shouldn't say all lyrics nowadays because that would be terrible. Um, a lot of lyrics are not as in depth. She happens to be a storyteller. So every song that you listen to from her has every, it's more than just an AB, you know, choir, chorus, whatever. It's, it's very involved. It's very musical and it's very, um, it's just poetic, you know? Um, so in this song, and I'm going to give you like my version of it and how you can bend it. So you don't have to know the intention of a song to use it for this purpose, of course. You know, every song has their own um, meaning behind it. And then they have people that just, you know, uh, musicologists that decide what it means. But the truth is a song is supposed to bring you to some sort of level of feeling. And if the artist has done that in any way, it doesn't matter what their intentions were. It matters what it does for you. Kind of agree? Sort of agree? Thumbs up? Yes? No? Okay. So both sides now, she's talking about um, childhood, you know, whimsical, uh, these feelings that she's talking about the clouds, like how she sees all these objects in the clouds, frozen flows of angel hair and ice cream castles in the air, all this beautiful fluffiness. And we're going to use this in our meditation. Um, and now she's an adult and everything kind of stinks. <laughs> but how everything is um, different. Clouds aren't whimsical anymore. They're blocking the sun. So sad, right? It's like, ah, oh, what, what happened? Um, so, and that kind of goes for, for everything. She's talking about love, how everything was so magical at first, and now it's like this. And these both sides now. Um, Joni was very, very smart. She knew that it was more black than black and white, but in the song, she's only giving two sides. But there's always like his, her, them in between, and everybody else's. So there's more than one side. I chose the song not just because it's in my head and I sing it all the time, um, but because I see how dichotomous, maybe even more than that, um, everything is in life, right? We can go from a an extreme feeling of chaos, which I've felt so many times in the past um, few days, maybe more than that. I don't know. I'm just going kind of by three days in a row. And then just an hour later extreme peace or joy or whatever um it's it's amazing how fast that can switch you know it's amazing i i watch my son who's having a very difficult time regulating his emotions he's very up and down um and it's been tough for us you know really hard to kind of go with these waves of my gosh what is he going to be like right now he's so cantankerous for lack of a better word um so with that being said, especially children, um, animals can do this too, but I've always said that they bring us back to the present, right? And the present can be so many different things. And if a child's involved, the present can be pretty extreme for some people. For us, it's been kind of extreme. Um, but our best part of the whole weekend, even though we, we went to this beautiful place, my friend let us have her place in the Hamptons. It was gorgeous. The kids loved it. But the best part of the entire weekend was actually on our ride home when we were listening to music pretty loudly and the kids were singing along. And I thought, how funny. Here we are. We try to set up all these things. We try to make it a certain way. But the best part is when we're just letting things ride out <laughs> and not controlling it. And the music is louder. So they kind of have no choice but to be in it with us, you know. Um, and they're singing these old songs, you know, they're Bill's old rock and roll stuff and um, just hysterical. I have some of it on video. <laughs> um, but that's the funny part about life, right? Here we are, like, we have these set things, we have set arrangements, and then things come and the clouds get in the way. That's what it can really feel like. It can really feel like, wow, we went from this magical stance to it's all whatever. Everything's blocking our route, our way. So 
I'm gonna ask you guys just to take a moment right now and I want you to think of the first song that pops into your head of like, yeah, I've thought about that song lyric wise so many times where it really got me. It doesn't have to be as involved as the Joni Mitchell song, but maybe there's a song that always makes you think like, yeah, that's so true. I really feel that song. You guys have anything right off? I know Mikey does, so I can call on him at any point. That's your favorite song too. See, that's why we're BFFs. <laughs> Um, I'm, what's that? I, yeah, I, I, I feel you. So yeah, Joni Mitchell for me is just like so amazing. Um, Tori does this too. She has storytelling. Her songs are actually even more, um, complex, like harder to read into because there's so many lines, right, Mikey? It's like, you have to really listen to it or you have to really know the words. Um, but there's a lot of artists like this, but that's not the only thing you're looking for. You're really looking for stuff that calls to you where you go, wow, I really understand this song. I really feel it deeply. You girls got anything? Not all fans. Okay. That's fine. I know, like, when I hear songs, it's just like, oh, yeah, totally relate. But there's so many like that, but I can't really. That's okay. Offhand. So yeah. think of it maybe later on because there's there's a reason that it's called, you, you're you called to it. It's not just the sound of it. Mm -hmm. Um it's something, it's something else, you know. I think, actually, even Foo Fighters is like that for me. They, uh, you know, Dave Grohl has some really great lines that are like, yeah. Um, or even when he wrote about Kurt Cobain with There Goes My Hero, like, it's hero, really. But um, just the feeling of, like, how he, he lost somebody at such a young age, you know, who was so influential, it's, which surprisingly enough so many people don't realize that he was the drummer if you can only imagine they have no clue um <laughs> but he's talking about one of his best friends and like how much that changed his life but it's not just that it's the sound of the progression it's the way everything's built up so music is so transformative for us that sometimes we have no idea why it moves us that way right so if you're not a musician generally or if you're um not really thinking about it it's very easy to get wrapped up into oh i don't know i just like that song i don't know it's just really touching but i'm inviting you tonight to think about it because there's a reason you're called to certain songs and your homework is going to be list your your top how many do you think i'm going to say 10. i want to know 10 songs no not three you can do better than three you can <laughs> list only three but i really think you can do better than three um that just get you for some reason it doesn't have to be like you're crying it just means that you feel it it could be a really power song like um eye of the tiger for john bruno would probably be it <laughs> right for whatever reason he feels really amped up with that song and that's that's it for him um but there's there's a reason for all of it so it's more than just oh i like this band there's i want you to pull out what's going on with it when i was in college and i had an audition um, you wouldn't just audition for one play, you would audition for the department, and which was really complex because <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, but I want to be in this one thing. And they're like, no, you have to audition for the entire department. So I took the challenge from class and I utilized um, a Tori Amos song, Me and a Gun, and I used that as a monologue, which if you know that song, it's about rape. It's really, really sad, um, but also very powerful because she's saying like, I have to get out of this because I have other things to do. Um, and it wasn't just, uh, you know, I was singing in my head as, as I was doing the monologue. And I just remember how powerful it was to really pull it in and really go like, there's such urgency in this song, such urgency. She knows I have to get out of this because I have other things to see and other things to do. And so that was her music. That was better than probably any other monologue I've ever done really it was so much more easy for me to pull in pull into because it was from music so something to think about another instance of that I actually remember in another scene in a different acting class uh she did my <laughs> teacher didn't like the way me and my scene partner were doing something she was pretty rough and she was like that's it aren't you girls singers we're like oh, i don't know maybe maybe <laughs> maybe we're singers and she's like, I want you guys to do the entire scene in, as if it was a musical. 
she made us sing the whole thing like it was a musical like right on the spot and I remember what a difference it was for me and for Rachel too. Rachel Croner if you're out there, hi. <laughs> um, but we were able to pull it in differently. So I want you to really think about this because music transforms things, which is why this whole year when we haven't had concerts and things like that, right? But we've had concerts at least live on the internet or whatever. Um, but we're suffering with the lack of the arts. So as the arts start to open again, think a little bit more mindfully. Why does that change me? Why does that help me? What does it do for us? When you hear music soothes the savage beast, right? That's like one thing you've heard all the time, but, um, but why, why does it do that? Any idea why? Think very quickly. Why do I do sound healing in my, in my treatments? What does that do? Come on, Renee. I what? mean, calms you, puts you in a place. Right, but, <laughs> but why? Why, what, why do we use singing bowls? Why do we use any of those tools? What does it do? Craving the vibration. Thank you, up. Jeannie Beanie, because I've said it a million times. So <laughs> I can do an entire three workshops at least on raising the vibration. Hey, Elise, music is, an yes, angelic vibration. Absolutely. So even at the end of my sessions, if I sing no words, no English, whatever, I use my voice, I call it vocal toning, um, where I'm like really loud, way, way louder than I am normally when I'm singing. And I'm purposely like, um, I actually asked in the Akashic record, records for myself what I'm doing when I'm doing vocal toning. And they told me I was connecting the dots to the galaxies. Like I was connecting everything and you can feel it. It just goes like zap. <laughs> so it's really direct. And then when you combine that with lyrics and words, how words have power, right? There's a deep healing that can happen or a deep feeling of movement, whatever that is. So we get to utilize that for ourselves. Hello, puppies. Hello. Um, so I got some powerful people on tonight. That's good. Small amount, but all power. So if you have one thought in your head tonight of one song and we're going to build to 10 and I'm going to ask you every day another song because I'm going to keep on this one because you need it. What does it do for you? Just to build that mindfulness, what does it do for you? Why do we come for meditation every Sunday night, right? What does it do for you? It does something. That's why you're back. I don't think it's just to see me. Debatable, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you'll... you'll yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, it does something. So, with that in mind, tonight's meditation. Oh, I'm too early. I got to keep going, guys. Mikey... <laughs> Mikey, this give... morning, I might pass out again. You always pass out. Sit up and do it. Mikey, yeah. Mikey, Mikey. I'm going to fall onto the computer. Yeah, let's see what happens. Um, give me... <laughs> I'm going to challenge Mikey on his, on his musicality because he's a genius. Um, give me a song by... Oh, how about Bjork? Give me a Bjork song. My favorite Bjork song is called Venus as a Boy. Venus as a Boy. Yeah, that... Yeah. So, like, I don't know where to be. Awesome. Mikey's saying... <laughs> Mikey's saying that um, his favorite Bjork song, so I gave him a challenge to name a Bjork song, was uh, Venus as a Boy, and that's because he, he doesn't feel like a typical male, but he's not gay, so he doesn't understand, like, where he fits in like that. So, this actually goes into last week's meditation, so I gotta get you to watch that one, because I was talking about calling in the Divine Feminine. Um, and about how we have this innate, um, what's supposed to be harmonious balance in our bodies between male divine and female divine and how our society sorely lacks it. You tend to have more female energy more than, not like, um, out of control, but just more than most males. And because of that, you feel like you don't fit in. 
So this is a really um, great example. Thank you for sharing that because that actually kind of ties everything together. Um, so maybe you felt like that too, where you're confused about like not even your your gender or your sexuality, but just like who you are, right? And maybe music has brought something out for you like that, where you can feel more identified or more validated like yourself. So here we go. We're going to go early into the meditation because that's the, that's the mode that I'm in. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about everything. So wherever you are, slow down, my friends. And tonight I'm going to ask you to do um, some, of, some of the energetic work with me. So I want you to sit up straight if you can. We're going to start like this palms together or actually slightly apart I'm sorry so fingertips are just touching lightly thumbs are kind of resting in and we're just gonna start to call upon the slowness of our breath now when your fingertips touch and your mind is starting to slow you might actually feel a little bit of a pulse or a little bit of a vibration. Anybody feel the vibration? Just start to notice that. Okay. And I don't want you to actually close your eyes yet. I just want you to feel your fingertips. Raise your shoulders up to your ears, squeeze them back down. Inhale, squeeze up. Shoulders back and down. Drop your chin to your chest. Take a deep breath in here. Big exhale. <sighs> Inhale here. Big exhale, let it out. <sighs> Come back to center with the head. Drop right ear down to right shoulder. Take a deep breath in here. Let the left side lengthen out. Exhale. Inhale back to center. Left ear drops out and left shoulder. Lengthening out the right side. Deep breath in. Big exhale. Inhale back into center. Good. Eyes are slightly and lightly, I should say, closed. Maybe the eyelids are fluttering. Just letting the body do what it needs to do, not fighting anything. And believe it or not, we're in our um, year mark of doing the meditation together. We're not at the 52 weeks yet, but we are at the year mark. It was, I think, May 3rd or something like that. So um, uh, in light of that, I'm going to use the old music just to get back to that for a bit. Now the fingertips and start to press against each other, the palms lightly pressing. Beautiful. You can bring your thumb pressed into the sternum, right at the breastbone, maybe even into the center. Feel the heat of the chest, feel the heat of the touch of your fingers against the bone, against the skin. Notice how the slowness of the breath expands the back just from positioning your body like this. So we think sometimes that, you know, meditation is one way or looks one way or has to be one way, but any focus is meditation. So right now we're focusing on just contacting fingertips to body allowing the breath to open the back body 
So now you're going to bring your um, dominant hand, middle finger, to your third eye. So the other hand will stay at the chest, and then the other one comes to the third eye area, middle finger there. And I want you to kind of seek out and figure out where your third eye actually is. Sometimes it feels directly between the brows and sometimes it feels a little higher up. Um, truthfully, it's all the third eye area. It's just more of what feels good for you. For me, it's like kind of more in between the brows that calms me down. And it also gives my sinuses a nice little lift. But you might notice that you feel just nicer, a little higher up. And your fingertip might naturally want to give little circles. So whatever way it feels like it needs circles, you're going to go that way. Great, deepen the breath. Now both hands are going to come to the top of the head. You're going to feel the center of the head. This is like right at 220. Give a little pressure up here. And then with both middle fingers, you're going to tap lightly. Just to open up the crown chakra area. And also, honestly, because touch feels good. And I think we forget that we can do our own massage. We can do our own tactile meditations. So you're going to remember crack um, an egg on your head? Same type of thing. You're going to bring your fingertips moving out towards the side, towards the ears as you tap lightly from center of the head and then out towards the ears. And then you come right back up. So we're doing a lot of things here. We're stimulating the whole area, waking it up. But after, have a nice calming effect. And that's kind of how life is, right? We get stimulated and then if we're paying attention, we'll get the rewards afterwards. Good. And then you're gonna bring it to the sides of your face and just like you're playing the piano really fast. Each fingertip is gonna have a roll, not just tapping, it's more of quick movements, all fingers, from the earlobes down to the chin, right on that mandible. And you can let the tongue drop. Ah. Good. Beautiful. And stay by the earlobes, you might actually feel a little tenderness. It might not just be the muscles on your mouth. It could be a little lymph going on there. And then you can go behind the ears, the same type of thing, except you're gonna use your index finger now and just do a little light pulse right behind the ears. So this is more sensitive over here. This is where we would start to check if any lymph nodes were swollen or anything like that. Um, and it's also a nice place to give a little extra lymph boost lymphatic movement. So just gentle movement here. And if you want, now you can stroke. So you can take those index and second finger and just bring it down lightly. So as you drop into the body, starting to feel what you need and what you want, sometimes they're not together and sometimes they are, but you can't figure that out if you're not seated in the physical body first. So we get right back into the body. Good. And then drop it all down on the throat. So this is also very, very light. It's gonna feel like, just imagine fanning all the energy down towards the chest. So anything with the lymph, um, if we're specifically just working on lymph or if we're just working on that energy movement, it's very, very soft, very light and very loving. You might 
actually every time you move your neck you might get a little adjustment in the neck and then we're going to end letting it go from the sternum outwards towards the shoulders just brushing across the chest good i'm going to opening up the heart here allowing the lungs to take a nice a nice breath And then, and for the next minute or so, as I start really talking into our meditation, I want you to continue doing this nice tactile touch for yourself, just going soft across the arms maybe, see if there's anywhere else in your body, or maybe starting to just to do a little stretching before you settle in fully. And then after that, if you'd like to, you can lie down, of course. Okay. So listening to the body, seeing what the pranic response is, just for paying attention to yourself, just for being soft and sweet and noticing. Notice what it feels like. In a massage, this very, very light touch is like, it just creates such a proprioceptive, like major response in the parasympathetics and it lights up so many things in the brain and it's so soothing and it's also kind of excitatory at the same time so you can notice that you might get the chills even from touching yourself like that but this exploratory touch please don't shy away from it it's very very necessary coming into the body and feeling safe and loved with yourself first okay So using the inspiration from lyrics and from music, and tonight I'm using both sides now from Joni Mitchell, so this brings me to a place of really deep reflection, but also this feeling of catharticness, and I'm going to use it to give you an example of what you can do with it. Tonight we begin playing outside like little children. Seeing yourself in the grass, seeing your friends running around, making sounds, hearing them making sounds, laughing, laughing a lot teasing each other, playing games and laughing a lot. And as always with meditation, my primary feeling is that you need to be safe and secure. So anything that doesn't fit in that mindset, I want you to release very, very quickly. So you're gonna be traveling to an empty field. It's so beautiful and it's so green. And there are little daisies, wild daisies, all around with little white faces and yellow centers. And lots of purple flowers, even tinier than the daisies. And their faces are so small and there's so many of them. And if you had an aerial view, you would just see white and purple streams of flowers against this grassy green background. So beautiful. And then as you look up into the sky, you're gonna see these big fluffy white clouds they're so picturesque and so easy and it's really sweet and simple for you to to notice how they make shapes and you can quickly identify a few shapes right here 
some are animals and some are just free floating and I'll invite you to choose a couple right now and really see them and notice what it feels like in your body notice what it feels like to watch them Notice how soft they are. And then I want you to roll over a couple times in the grass and come to the other side of it. So now you're like flipped upside down. And you can look at these same clouds and you're gonna notice that they look different. And maybe you'll think that one was nicer than the other or maybe you won't even try to judge it. You're just noticing how different it is looking from the other side. And along in this field now comes one of your friends and you lie down head to head facing opposite directions so they get to see the first way that you were looking at the clouds and ask them what they see see if they see the same things as you And just notice how your friends may or may not see the same thing. I mean, what does it feel like? Does it matter? I bet it doesn't matter. Just happy to be together. And every breath that you take here just lightens up your whole body. All the worries and concerns that you have are just fleeting away, flying away with that cloud, those clouds, those feelings. And now you'll both open your eyes and your mind and you'll look at these tiny flowers again, noticing how each one has these tiny, tiny little petals and how life has come to the fields. How purple, how white have contrasted against this rich grass. And it really is magical. Moons and Junes and Ferris wheels. You and your friend are gonna stay there till dark comes and it's warm out like June. And across the way, you're gonna see a carnival. And you're definitely gonna go on a Ferris wheel. And if in real life that's too scary for you, you're gonna put on your brave face and you're gonna go and remember that this is all safe and fun. And what we're feeling here in the spinning ways, allowing the body to feel excitement, allowing the stomach to get that little hiccup in it where it feels like, ooh, what happened to my belly? As a child, this is exciting. Notice how just quickly changing from the field to a Ferris wheel changes the way you feel in your body. Notice how the breath may want to change. Notice how you're thinking about the lights at a carnival, the sounds. Just redirecting and noticing. And 
You'll take a few more breaths here, just feeling the wind in your hair as you go on a very slow Ferris wheel or a fast one if you like. And when you're finished there, you're gonna get off obviously safely. And the first person you're gonna see is a grown up that you love. Notice who you choose, who you run to as a child. And they're going to hug you deeply, hard. And they're gonna walk home with you and your friend and this person that you love. And then they're going to tuck you into bed and sit at the foot of your bed and read you a story. See if there's a book that you remember or recall that you feel, or if there's just some random story happening, whatever it is. And you'll go to sleep feeling safe and loved here. And now when you wake up, I want you to be yourself older. So I'm gonna throw out an age and you can make yourself older or younger, but I wanna some place where there's a turning point in your life. So maybe about like late twenties, maybe mid to late twenties where there has been a shift, maybe a new career, maybe you're out on your own. I want you to come to that type of age where you're just kind of coming into your own, so to speak, as an adult. So wherever that is. The age is not so important. What's important is that I want you to feel this flip side. So for a moment, I'm going to take you out of the simple happiness of being a child, but just bear with me. You know, I always come back. You walk outside and you see the trees. And the trees are blocking the sun. And you also notice there's a lot of clouds in the sky. And keep walking on your way. And you'll get into your car. And you'll start driving. And you get stuck in traffic. Again, notice how your body feels. Just the thought of this. Don't worry, I'm going to let you get out of it soon. And now I quickly want you to go to um, a relationship, an old relationship, where maybe they had a hard time saying I love you, or you did, or there maybe wasn't a feeling of deep love, just something that was challenging. Remember, we're going to get out of it. You're safe. I'm guiding you through it for a reason. I bet you have a face right away. Everyone has some sort of relationship that wasn't the way you wanted it to be. And sometimes those types of relationships will repeat, right? You're going to say goodbye to this person. You're going to go back into your field right away. This old field that we came to when we were younger, happy child, childlike. And now you're going to go sit with yourself as a child. Same child that you just were a few moments ago. You're going to sit. Um, or you can lie down the way you were with your friend, head to head, opposites. And now in the next few breaths, I want you to 
comes to the conclusion that the cloud above you is definitely a unicorn. You're going to have this conversation with your younger self and say that is most definitively a unicorn. And then you're going to tell that child how happy you are to lie there with them amongst the flowers. Say a few hours ago I was in traffic and now I'm here with you noticing the flowers. Just a little while ago I was driving noticing how the trees were blocking the sun and now I'm here with you and I feel the sun. And then I want you to tell this child who is you, I deeply love you. I deeply love you. You are deeply loved. You're going to give the child you the choice of what they want to do next. And over the next couple minutes, you're going to go do that. Maybe you're going back to that carnival together, or maybe you're just sitting and talking, or maybe you're hugging them, whatever it is. Really do that. And guys, if something deeper is happening here where you're really feeling called to heal a portion of you that needs extra love, by all means, go there right now with the child version of you and, and be there. And you know what? Let's give an additional part of this. Whatever your name is, I'm going to say Mary. You say to the child version, Mary, in a few years, you might be hurt like this because you know what's happened in time, right? Over time, this can happen in your life. And then you're going to tell them, you're going to create some boundaries. You're going to do certain things that are going to be there to help you get through it. And I thank you for doing that. You did a great job. You're doing a great job. And now it's time for us to heal together. So thank you for being a protector for me. And now I'm going to be a protector for you. Because remember, time is looped. It's not linear. So have fun with them for a few more breaths and let them go free in that sense of protectiveness for anything that you're holding on to. Let them go free. Let them know that they are fully loved they are secure, and they are protected, and they don't need any more boundaries. Can you get a sense of how you've changed over the years, right? So even though time is not the way we see it, we're still in it. And you've changed so much over the years. And then um, Joni says here, but now old friends are acting strange. They sh shake their heads. They say I've changed. But the next line is, well, something's lost, but something's gained. I'm living every day. 
So you've changed over the years, but yes, you may have lost certain things, but then you've gained others. And here you are with this child's version of you acknowledging how much has happened over those years, how much has happened. And sometimes it can feel really messy and difficult, but you got to here and you're only calling for more ease and for it to be better and better. So anything that's lost, see if you can see how other things are gained. Remember to each other you say, I deeply love you. And now you both stare at the clouds and notice how nothing is in the way. And the clouds aren't in the way of the sun. And the trees aren't in the way of the clouds or the sun. Nothing's in the way. All parts are important. All parts are beautiful. And even the bugs that are coming onto those tiny little flowers, they're very important. And they're not in the way of you seeking out the beauty. So notice what it feels like to say, to your younger self, I deeply love you. This fear of loving all parts of ourselves are just like the clouds. Seeing them as obstacles instead of embracing them as protective measures that were necessary at one point. They were necessary at one point and now they're not. So say, I love you, right out loud. And then come back to the fingertips again. They don't have to come together. I just want you to notice them. If they're down by your side with your palms facing up, you might get a sense of weightedness as you go through a healing like this. You might start to feel like there's um, beings or balls of energy coming and just letting the body sit still because you're so busy all the time. Admitting that we don't know how things really are is just really releasing ego and acknowledging that it's divine that has everything going. So when she says, it's life's illusions I recall, I really don't know life at all. I really don't know love at all. She's saying, I acknowledge that all these things that I thought I knew that perhaps were serving me, I don't really know much about them. And that's how big everything is. So just acknowledging that we don't need to know inside of us the divine. They know. So taking your breaths back into your physical form, for now you'll say goodbye to your child self and thank them and play with them again. And coming into the Acknowledgement that we're releasing anything that does not serve us, anything of protective barrier means or boundaries or things that are weighing us down or we feel like are obstacles in our way that we fully uncreate, destroy, release, that we're finished and we're moving through and moving on.
and using any colors to come back into the body deeply. We used white and purple tonight. Maybe that calls to you. And you can let that run through yourself as if you're running colors. And maybe you'll see them in light form and maybe you'll even see them in flower form still. Just running all down the body. Nice slow breath in and allow a wind to come all the way down towards the feet, just passing over the body, releasing everything. Beautiful. So I read to you at the beginning of this, the lyrics for that song, and then I use them to guide a meditation. So maybe you've wondered how I come up with meditations before, or um, this is not usually how I do, but I wanted to give you an example of a way to do something like this. This is for deep healing. It was deeper than I thought it would be, but um, this is a song that I love that I think about a lot that um, the lyrics always have meant something to me and you can get imagery like that and obviously I didn't go line by line and create that imagery what I did was I brought you to a place so that you can receive it so meditation as I see it is always about coming to a place of pause so that you can listen and receive um, so yeah, so if anybody wants to share that experience um, here, and if you don't, that's cool too. Um, how are you guys feeling? Hi, Nene. You don't have to talk, but I am curious how you experience things, but that's okay. Okay, they're quiet. They're on mute, so it's okay. Um, okay, so for the homework for this week, I'm going to ask you to find 10 songs, 10 songs that you can utilize. Let me try this, though. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> and this, I need to write it down. Write it down. I'll post it, but apparently people don't read posts. So I don't know what to say. 10 songs that inspire you in some way. They don't have to be um, poetic like Joni Mitchell, but just more of like they call to you. And then maybe a little blurb of why you feel like that. What, is, what does it do for you? And then we'll go into how you can use it for a meditation purpose. Okay, guys? So I'm going to talk to my little peanut gallery over here. If you have any questions, I'm here. And um, otherwise, enjoy your week. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Namaste.